everybody. Welcome to the Talking Heartland podcast and the show where we like to talk about the Heartland TV show. And we are finishing up season 16. Very exciting today. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner. Michelle's here. Hey, everyone. Can you believe it? We're done. Yeah, we say that every year. It's just the never ending show. <laughs> yes. It's like I always joke with you. You didn't know you were making a lifetime commitment. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be recapping Amy's 50s at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think so. Yeah, yeah, we'll have uh, <laughs> the uh, Amy and Lou will 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 uh, be doing their like the their version of I guess Golden Girls once everybody. <laughs> yeah, we we'll fade into them. the background and we'll become Lindy. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, today we're talking about the last two episodes of season 16, and we have episode 14 called After the Ever After. It's Amy helps Georgie rediscover her passion for show jumping. Lou's surprised when Peter announces he's moving to Heartland. A winter fair allows Tim to help Jessica in and his rodeo school. So overall, what do you think of this episode? Um, yeah, I was just so excited to have Georgie back. Um, it's just been such a long time since we've seen her. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I was just excited for that. And she still looks so young to me. But yeah, when we saw like the flashbacks of when she first joined the show, she was such a baby. Um, yeah. But yeah, I really like this episode and I'm just glad. Yeah, like I said, I'm just happy to have her back. I I thought this one was, I liked all the Georgie stuff. It yeah. Lou and Peter stuff. Yeah. I was not. I was not as big a fan of, Mm -hmm. uh, but Lindy Mm -hmm. was so cute (laughs) in both these episodes. She was adorable. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, uh, and so all the stuff, not Peter and Lou was Mm -hmm. good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, That's been the case quite a few times. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's just, uh, I just couldn't almost couldn't believe that they were, they were, bringing back the same conflict mm-hmm. of he's in he's in uh yeah. yeah and he's in vancouver and she's in hudson and he's in dubai and she's <laughs> <laughs> and i had forgotten that he had done the kind of the cowboy thing before in another episode but i still think that the best the best plot for peter was when he was going to be a stay-at-home dad that whole mm-hmm. segment was so was like great and i and i mean lou has like three jobs like <laughs> i do wish he was just like why don't they make him a, they could make him a writer or a consultant or something like that and he just works at the the ranch that would be way better than this really boring conflict of him being in vancouver and she's in yeah vancouver. yeah it's just very old at this point um yeah, I wouldn't mind, you know, them having conflict if it was something different. But yeah, yeah. they just go back to the same well over and over again. It's very frustrating because it yeah. always paints Lou in the worst light, um, which is, mm-hmm. you know, annoying to do when you have, you know, like you've said, like such a strong female character um, from the outset. Like, you know, if you, you sort of take a step back and she's got all of these accomplishments, but then when it comes to relationship stuff, it's just the same stuff over and over mm-hmm. and it makes her just seem like a nag like you said yeah well and conflict doesn't always have to be negative in tone like let's just say as an example what if peter was like i want to go get my master's degree or something like that just and so it's like a positive thing he's doing but it mm-hmm. it is still conflict of like how are we going to how are we going to add this into our, you know, life and, and make it all work and everything. Like, it's just an example off the top of my head, but you know, it doesn't always have to be like, we're fighting over something. It can just be, this is an obstacle that we have to get through. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I always look at, you know, Friday night lights or parenthood, mm. um, you know, there was relationships in that, you know, there was, you know, forget Peter Krause's character's name but there was him and Monica Potter like mm-hmm. they would have conflict but you never ever worried about the relationship same with coach and Tammy they would have conflict but you would never worry about the fact yeah. that they were ever going to break up that's There's true a way to- yeah yeah that's those are two good examples 
And obviously this is a, a, a kind of progressive couple. And it does feel a little bit like, wouldn't somebody in Hudson try to use the fact that she's not married, but they're, you know, in this committed relationship, like, it seems like the kind of thing that somebody would try to use somebody, you know, ultra conservative or whatever, try to use against her. And that could be like an interesting, you know, plot line. I mean, they've had ones where, where Luz had to prove that she's like a good mother and, you know, there's mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, but I don't know, like that could be like, everybody just sort of accepts their relationship and to have, which is, I'm not saying their relationship is wrong. I'm just saying that you could use that as a point of conflict that somebody that's very, you know, old school traditional would try to, you know, use that against her. Yeah. And it wasn't until this episode or the next one where they talk about the fact that they're not married. I was like, oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I know, me too. I forgot too. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. So Georgie's back and she is quitting jumping. She's very depressed and she keeps replaying the accident that she had over and over and over again. And, you know, that makes sense. I mean, I definitely think that you would have to go to therapy. I mean, I would think that any professional athlete, I mean, most people, it's helpful to at different times of your life to go to therapy. Um, But I think especially when you're doing something as intense as being a professional athlete, like you should be, you should be getting mental health care. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm fairly certain in certain sports, if you're under a certain age or, or, you know, they're trying to sort of raise the ages in a lot of sports as well, like figure skating and That's tennis true. and things like that, they're trying to raise the age. But I definitely think sports therapy should be, like, mandatory. Um, yeah. Like, there's, a, there's a good documentary uh, with Michael Phelps uh, and a bunch of other athletes, um, The Price of Gold. Yeah, I saw and, that, yeah. Yeah, that was good. And uh, mm-hmm. so, yeah, uh, but she's basically, it seems like basically Quinn has been her therapist. <laughs> yeah, therapist, coach. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, and then we have uh, Peter saying he wants to quit, uh, retire, wants to work for Heartland. And uh, this whole, he, he goes and works with the cows and uh, it's pretty, pretty brutal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's yeah sore he and tired. <laughs> even just if you're not used to it i've only horseback ride a couple times in my life um uh, and after you're sore i mean anytime mm-hmm. you do any kind of activity that you're not used to doing mm-hmm. you're going to feel it in those muscles yeah i mean even when i take my job is pretty physical as well just like there's just a lot of mm-hmm. stock and merchandise that has to be moved around and yeah. And things like that. If I take a week off and then I go back, you feel it. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. That's true. And uh, so he's super, he's feeling it. <laughs> he's aching. Uh, and, uh, and he says to Lou, it doesn't seem like you like spending time together, which I think is like valid. And mm-hmm. Lou says, you think I push and pressure, but maybe I actually know what's right. And I wrote down, Lou is frustrating me. <laughs> like oh my gosh 
you can't, that's not the way that people work. Like Mm -hmm. you have to make people feel, be able to make the choices themselves and then feel validated in those choices. Like, I don't know. You just, it, like, it makes you want to do the exact opposite when people act like Lou. Yeah. And it's also just like, like you said, it's an unconventional relationship and I don't know why they don't lean into that. Like it's progressive in the way that Mm -hmm. they are together, but they don't live together. You know, that's, you know, it shouldn't be portrayed as like a negative thing if it works for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's just obviously when there's sort of kids involved, it gets a little bit more messy in that sense. But yeah, I think the show should sort of lean into a little bit more. As opposed to trying yeah, to I agree. I have agree. this big argument over and over. Yeah, just anything other than you live in Vancouver. <laughs> like We're getting desperate at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. Um, so Jack says that Peter is the new Mitch, which is kind of funny because, uh, because Mitch like was more of a cowboy, certainly, than Peter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> but uh, we haven't heard his name on the show for a long time. So that was kind of interesting yeah. to have him back and mentioned. Uh, and then we have Georgie is, is, has her old room back. So Katie gives up her room and she's just, Katie is kind of sulking. And she says that uh, she feels like an outsider in the family. And I can definitely relate to that. I remember as a teenager feeling like very, very different than my family. Uh, Mm -hmm. I was definitely way more sort of social and active than anybody else in my family. They were all kind of more bookish and, and uh, homebodies and, and things like that, especially my, my brother and sister. And so they bonded and uh, you know, I was like in drama and in other activity swim team and just more of a social person more of a uh, uh and so it was frustrating for me because I felt like I was sort of the more normal one in a in, as far as school and stuff but then when I would go home I would be the kind of the different one and mm-hmm. uh, I remember being very very frustrated by that and so I could relate to Katie when she says that about feeling like an outsider uh and I, and I think it is whenever you aren't uh whenever anybody on Heartland isn't into horses. I mean, it seems like Katie's fine with horses, but not a particular skill set of hers. And that, yeah. that that's hard. Yeah. And especially when you live with multiple generations of the, your family, yeah. that, that's just a different thing as well. Mm-hmm. But I really like the connection that they've given for Jack and Katie this season. Yeah, that's nice. Mm-hmm. I like that there's the sort of, paired her off with Jack and, and Lisa um, mm-hmm. because we never really got many Amy and Lisa scenes yeah. that you know there were there was just sort of an air of conflict there mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so this is like a nice dynamic and the music thing was being nice as well yeah yeah I like that a lot and she basically says to Georgie you were the ideal uh, daughter and which is kind of hilarious when you think she literally ran away from home <laughs> 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 for multiple days <laughs> yeah they were all terrified she was not the ideal daughter <laughs> <laughs> and uh and but they kind of make up and uh and then we have caleb supposed to get a celebrity for the rodeo school for this thing they're doing and he is having trouble finding us anybody. So he gets this mascot, which I thought was really funny. Yeah, that is really funny. <laughs> yes. He's got such heavy lifting to do. He pretty much carries all of the comedic stuff on the show. Yeah, it's true. That's true. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the new novel, The Fairest of Heart by Karen Wittemeyer. Hallmarkies listeners, don't miss this 30% off deal from author Karen Wittemeyer. Rediscover the classic fairy tale of Snow White with a Western twist in her new novel, Fairest of Heart. In this enchanting tale, beauty has been nothing but a curse to Penelope Snow. And when her beauty is discovered, her mistress arranges her disappearance. 
Texas Ranger Titus Kingsley is assigned a robbery case tied to Penelope and all evidence points to her, but he might be convinced that the fairest woman of all has a heart as pure as her last name. If only he can prove it. Purchase Ferris of Heart for 30% off and free shipping at bakerbookhouse.com. That's bakerbookhouse.com. And we have the actual event happens and the big surprise, you not only have Caleb as the mascot, which again, hilarious, but then Jade gives a speech, which mm, was fun to see funny. her back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, Georgie starts to get inspired by Lindy and she says she sees the joy in Lindy's eyes and doing the barrel racing. It's super cute. Yeah, it's really cute. And then we also have Tim uh, that Jess is frustrated because what's his name? Uh, Grayson. Grayson uh, ruined her, her, her photos. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because they have just still hand developing all of her prints. I don't know anybody that still does that. These <laughs> hand develops. I mean, that yeah. shoots in film. I mean, I, I don't know anybody who does. And I know quite a few photographers, actually. <laughs> like, wow. Uh, I guess keeping it old school, but he ends up uh ends up setting tim sets up this little fair booth for her which is really mm-hmm. cute and people love her photography yeah so it was an interesting storyline and sort of brought back the the previous characters that we'd seen but yeah just mm-hmm. such a weird thing of like why would they hire <laughs> someone <laughs> who's like filming gritty black and white images and then colorizing it and airbrushing it it's yeah like white fire in the first place it's like the opposite yeah it seems of, yeah. like it seems like a lot of work it really yeah. does yeah and uh so jess, but jess says you never gave up on me and so she wants to do a scholarship in the school for female rodeo it's cute mm-hmm. yeah so Georgie says she's still not going to compete, but she did get out there with Phoenix. Amy had been riding Phoenix and she says Phoenix still wants to jump. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. we know, I mean, he ran he ran away too. Yeah, he was he constantly like, horse. Uh, yeah. In the fence. The fence, yeah. That was such a good scene when he was jumping the fence again. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, and then and then Peter says, okay, I'm not going to leave the job. And Lou says they should renew their vows, which he's like, we didn't, we're not actually married. So I kind of was thinking that they were going to have, it'd be like, surprise, it's actually a wedding. Yeah. You know, it just, yeah. Okay. Like, why not? It. Why not get married at this point? Yeah. I don't really understand mm-hmm. why. Yeah why they wouldn't at this point but anyway Mm -hmm. and uh, it was really cute at the end uh uh lindy says look mommy georgie's flying (laughs) yeah (laughs) really cute on phoenix of course so what would you give this episode one to ten uh like 7.5 yeah i could see that yeah the majority of it is the the georgie stuff yeah, the majority was good, except for Peter mm-hmm. and Lou. Yeah. Okay, so then our last episode is of the season is called Light in the Dark. And this is, Jack accepts the problems that have caused him and Al Cotter to disagree. Lou and Peter's relationship gets stronger. Georgie makes a crucial decision that will affect the future. And Amy develops a new perspective on her direction. So what do you think of this uh, finale for the season? Um, I thought it was a good finale. I, I liked that, you know, there was a couple of cliffhangers, but overall it, it sort of felt like like a bit of a bookend. Mm-hmm. I didn't love the, the renewal of the vows. It, it, it honestly just felt like they, they wanted something to bring them all together. Yeah. And this is what they chose. But yeah, it just felt like, like really cheesy and unnecessary for me. Mm-hmm. um that's just how I felt personally towards it it was like how many times have we seen a couple stand in front of this fireplace and it just felt like yeah 
end the season on that note. It's um, too bad they've already given Peter a stone because that yeah. would have been a perfect spot for, for doing that. For doing that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Have they given Katie a stone? I can't remember, probably. <laughs> probably not. Just for <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> um, but it starts out with this whole thing with Lindy seeing uh, this horse cause chasing this other horse off. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and he said, she says he wouldn't let him be his friend. It was Lindy was so good in this episode. I absolutely loved every scene that she was in. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So so, good. Yeah. Her totally highlighted why I could never like be on a farmer. I would was just want to keep everything. <laughs> it's just yeah. like all of this reason. <laughs> when Amy's like, you named him? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was really cute. <laughs> So then we have this renewal happening. And so everybody is kind of helping. At first, it was just going to be the family, but then Lou invites Carl and Rick. And, uh, and then you have uh, the uh, Jack helping with the lights as he goes down into the cellar. That's when you see Jess hand developing all the friends. And uh, he's looking for the lights and he has kind of a flashback of uh of his dad Mm -hmm. and uh, he is startled by it he says he had this horrible dream and his dad was a you know was an alcoholic and Mm -hmm. and that's why he was so triggered when he saw the empty uh whiskey bottle Mm -hmm. at the cabin yeah um so Georgie gets the opportunity to move to Brussels to work with a lady who helps athletes and horses, like with their mm-hmm. trauma. So it's like the European version of Amy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, Lindy like goes out and she finds this horse. She's like relentless of telling Amy that they need to help this horse. They need to help the horse. And uh, so she finds the horse and she names him Theo Mm -hmm. and and it is so cute and Lindy says to him so Chandra the owner of the horse comes and uh and Amy says maybe Chandra loves him as much as you do and Mm -hmm. Lindy says uh says right to her face I love him do you (laughs) it's really cute and then she says to to Amy, then why did she let him run away? So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, she has a point. It yeah. seems like this Chandra is not in the like space to take care of a horse. Yeah, it's a shame they didn't give her a little bit more to sort of explain the situation. But yeah, I, I got the feeling that she's like started college and just doesn't have the time um, to spend with him. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and then we have, uh, the, uh, we have the Jack admits the reason why he hates Al. It's not about the whole thing with Lindy, uh, Mm -hmm. that he hates Al because Al was basically his dad's drinking buddy Mm -hmm. and bringing alcohol to the cabin Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he finds when he's looking for the lights, he finds uh, an old copy of his dad's will that gives Al the fishing cabin and all the land. And so he mm-hmm. goes up to Al and says, here's the fish, the deed and land title. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. 
There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Like it in terms of just like emotionally, it really made sense. Um, I knew that he, I wasn't going to keep the, the cabin and that it would eventually like it, the episode would end with him giving it back. Mm-hmm. The conflict itself and the emotion um, of that situation still felt really real. Um, mm-hmm. And it felt like an issue that someone would hold on to for a long time. So it didn't feel unbelievable or, you know, this doesn't make sense as to why he's been mm-hmm. angry with him for so long. It, it made total sense. Um, and I think just in terms of the acting and all that, that sort of was a big aspect of that. Like the acting was so good and, you know, somebody that provides someone with alcohol and, you know, whatever their vice may be, you know, yeah. you know, it, it makes sense that their anger is sort of placed there as well, especially yeah. when he's not around to, to, be, to get the brunt of it anymore. So it has to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. He says he wasn't stealing Lindy. He was stealing time from my dad. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty understandable. And I thought that they, that the acting was very strong with this whole section. Yeah. Um, It's not often that they have to go quite this dark, but it, in this show, you know, it's a lighter show, but Mm -hmm. I thought Sean did a really good job in all of this. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. Um, especially you know having such a heavy issue end the season as well mm-hmm. um, yeah but I thought it was real handled really well yeah I loved this whole scene between Amy and Lindy where Amy says how would you feel if if uh Harley got lost and someone took him and she's just like immediately I would never let Harley get lost <laughs> that was really cute <laughs> yeah never (laughs) Uh, and so then we have uh quinn showing up to see georgie quinn proposes to georgie and she doesn't answer first and i don't really understand what would the problem would be of them getting married i mean how old do you think she is now like 21 22 21 22 yeah something like that like, I, mean, I, think I, mean, I just Amy feel like it would be a, a fun thing for the show to have like mm-hmm. Georgie get married like I, I mean and they're like we're so young and I'm like there are advantages for getting married young it like for any age of getting married it just matters it just depends on who the people are where they are in in their life and and I remember this was a long time the uh Frank I think Frank Frankie Muniz the the Ma- Malcolm in the Middle guy yeah mm-hmm. anyway and he got married really young and people i remember just listening to this interview and they were like oh you're getting married so young and he's like i've been basically an adult since i was you know really young and mm-hmm. so to other people it might seem young but to me it's not young and like yeah. and i think that's absolutely right like it just depends on the people involved in their life experiences and how much are they willing to grow as a couple mm-hmm. and and, and because you're going to experience all these things in life, but you're going to experience them together. And, mm-hmm. and as opposed to like getting married older can be really hard because you're setting your ways. You're, you're not as flexible as, as you are when you're younger is to grow together as a couple. And so there's not like some guarantee that, oh, I've reached a certain age. Therefore it's a good time to get married. Mm-hmm. I just think it would be fun. It would be a fun plot element. So I don't understand why they they had this had her saying no. I didn't really mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, and I don't think there's any harm in just letting them get engaged as well. Mm-hmm. Especially when they're, they're not on the show as much. So yeah, and they also had Mallory and and Jake get married really young. So it's it's not like the show has not done it before. Yeah, or Amy and Ty got married Amy young. And Ty, yeah yeah uh so uh, that was kind of a bummer uh yeah, but i i, I think, think just because it seemed to really spare at the moment maybe that was it yeah well rick and carl get their baby and mm-hmm. i think i'm pretty sure that that's michelle morgan's baby 
yeah, that's the, the baby that she just was on the yeah. camera weaver. <laughs> it's crazy. So that was really cute. <laughs> I would get this commitment ceremony to Lou and Peter. And then uh, we have uh, Jess gives uh, them, gives uh, Jess gives Lisa, was it Lisa and um uh and jack it's a, like a photo gives them a photo and there's katie katie gives lisa and jack a photo oh yeah it's katie sorry <laughs> so katie gives yeah lisa and jack a photo and uh, then we find out that rick is running for mayor mm-hmm. but i guess that was just a cliffhanger for next season because they didn't really go anywhere in this episode yeah, I think that'll be Lou's issue next season. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, and so then uh, Edwin and Rebecca are at the uh, ceremony. Mm-hmm. Um, the show and, or to the show. And, uh, and then Edwin and Rebecca are at the show and you have lights on the horses and everything looks mm-hmm. really pretty and this all sort of Lindy's thing. And uh, and then Chandra says that she wants the a horse to stay at Heartland. And Amy says uh, that uh, tells Lindy and it was adorable. Um, yeah. And then you have this whole scene between Amy and Jack and uh, says you had a strong, he says you had a strong mother and you're raising Lindy alone. I couldn't be more proud. Mm-hmm. That's cute. Yeah, that was cute. Mm hmm. And then Al comes and says, I took him the booze because I thought it would make him like me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he says, I don't want your fishing cabin. There's too many memories. So then they, they reconcile. Yeah. It was a good ending to, um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. to so, that storyline. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what do you think overall of the season? Do you feel good about season 16? What are your thoughts? I think they did a remarkable job given the sort of issues that they had and, you know, having such, you know, they had Michelle Morgan on maternity leave at certain points. They had also the tragic loss of of Robert and they had a lot to sort of contend with. And I think they amazingly delivered such a strong season. So, yeah. And they had, you, you know, maybe one or two episodes that were like, top tier heartland so yeah yeah overall i think it was a a fairly good season i agree i think it was a a good season with uh for most of the characters and particularly i think what they were able to do with katie it was kind of funny because we started out the recap saying that they don't know what to do with katie and then they proceeded to like her an interesting character for the whole season yeah (laughs) So that was good and everything with Lindy was really good and uh, and there were some good horse stories that worked mm-hmm. well that what you want with Heartland. So overall, I would give this this I would give it like 8.5 this finale. Mhm. Yeah, but cool it's that. not top tier but it, it was it was good. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good way to end the season. Mhm. Yeah. So let us know what you think of these two episodes. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section or on Twitter. And uh, Michelle, where can people find you? Um, On Twitter at Michelle R. Benson. You find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. Also, make sure you're following us at Homework's Pod and Homework's Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. and only takes a second. And if you are... Uh, listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have a patron group and merch store, which really helps us out a lot. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you all next season, <laughs> whenever it comes. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.